Testing, 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 testing. Big Daddy Kern got a new microphone. Look at that. It's finally happening. I really don't know what I'm doing with this, so I keep pushing the wrong button. Let's see if we can make this look as easy as everybody else pretends it is. Oh, just like that. All right, guys, so we are back in the car for another video. And today we're going to be talking about suspension. In particular, we're just gonna talk about the different suspension setups that I've tried. I've had multiple stock suspension setups, multiple spring setups, and I've gone to coilovers as well. So in this video, we're just going to talk a little bit about my review or my feedback on what you can expect between the different setups and which one might be best for your goals and your budget. Now, honestly, I'm not going to talk about looks in this video. Looks are very subjective. So you guys can feel free to argue, uh, not argue, have a constructive conversation in the comments about, you know, the perfect ride height for our cars. But I'm gonna focus on like kind of performance, driver comfort, and just experience from behind the wheel. So yeah, we'll go ahead and talk about it in this video and hopefully you find it useful. Now, as always, for everybody that's new to the channel, I create these videos to help keep you updated on the latest developments in our community, as well as discuss technical topics so that we have a better understanding of how our engines work. So if you're interested in more videos like that, be sure to subscribe because there will be a lot more coming out in the future. So first of all, let's talk about the stock suspension setups because there are a couple differences. BMW gave different setups to different platforms depending on their options and things like that. So for those of you guys that don't know, rear wheel drive cars sit a little bit lower and ride a little bit stiffer than X drive cars. And four series, of course, are a little bit lower and stiffer than three series. And if you got the M Sport suspension, that made it stiffer than the base suspension. So with all of that in mind, I kind of realized that my 440i more or less had the sportiest, lowest, stiffest suspension available from BMW for our platform because it's a rear wheel drive four series with the M Sport package. Now, I liked how that suspension drove. It was perfectly fine for me. I bought it as a sports car, so if it drove sporty, it didn't really bother me. But I assumed, you know, there were more compliant and comfortable options out there. They just, you know, weren't necessarily going to be that much better. Then I got this car, and I am honestly completely transformed in my thinking because this car has the adaptive suspension. My 4 Series did not. My 4 Series just had the base M Sport static suspension, and this adaptive suspension is amazing. I can't recommend it enough for people that want to leave their car mostly stock. The good news is that the comfort mode in this car definitely does feel softer than my 4 Series felt stock, but it still feels very composed. It still feels very natural. I know a lot of people complain and say that the stock suspension is too floaty or they have different problems with it. For me, it was perfectly fine. I've been tracking my car all year on the stock suspension. Handled it great, no complaints from me. There is also a sport mode, which is stiffer than what my 4 Series was. So you can basically ride in comfort mode and have it softer or drive in sport mode and have it stiffer for people that want to experience that and feel every single pebble in the road. I never really used it just because it felt artificially stiff, especially for the stance and everything that the car had. It just wasn't necessary, but that is obviously an option available for you guys if you want to go that route. Now the only downside I will say is of course the adaptive suspension is controlled electronically so there are more opportunities for your suspension to fail and have issues. I've already had an issue with mine. If you guys noticed at my last track day I kept getting chassis stabilization errors and luckily you know I realized that it still let me drive in traction mode. It didn't pull power or anything like that. So I finished the weekend just letting it throw errors but it got worse and worse and worse and by the time I got home anytime I turned on the car the error would come right back up and it ended up being the acceleration sensor on the wheel or on the suspension had failed so I replaced that luckily it wasn't too expensive it's pretty easy to access once you remove the wheel I didn't have to replace the whole shock or anything but um you know that's something that I would never have to deal with 
on my four series. So from that aspect, I definitely think it's just not as reliable. It's still fine. It works well for probably most people. My assumption is that driving it on the track, I was generating a lot of heat and maybe, you know, the ambient heat from the brakes and stuff overheated that sensor and caused it to fail. But, you know, we'll kind of see as time goes on if I keep running into that issue or if it was just a one-off problem. But um, I, I think the trade-off's worth it, again, just for daily driving, having the option to switch modes and having that extra comfort in comfort mode. You know, the car drives like a dream. It even drives better than my X5, personally, in my opinion. You know, it's not floaty, but it's not excessively harsh. It just works out of the box. Now, obviously, there is an upgrade from there. You can do lowering springs, and lowering springs are probably the best value suspension mod for our cars because they're so cheap, but they provide so many improvements. It lowers your car, so it lowers the center of gravity. It also helps increase the camber, which is the primary reason I lowered my car. I wanted more camber in the rear, and I had maxed it out at around 1.5 degrees in the rear on the stock suspension, and now I've got H&R Sport Springs, and it allows me to get to almost negative two which is great for me again this is for track handling purposes not for looks or wheel fitment or stance or anything i just wanted better cambers so that when i go through a turn my car can handle it better obviously i really enjoy turns but yeah so i think the sport springs or any spring suspension is a nice cheap upgrade that provides a lot of benefits. The only downside is of course it does make the car stiffer, but I think it's something that, you know, most enthusiasts can handle or deal with, you know, it's just a part of the trade-off. For me on the H&R springs with this adaptive suspension, I feel a minimal difference over bumps. It's more noticeable, but just driving down the road, I don't feel like I'm getting more feedback. You know, it's kind of like when I see a pothole or something like that, then the bump feels more pronounced. But again, I think it's just the benefit of having adaptive suspension. It helps absorb some of those bumps and it still works with lowering springs. You just have that lower stance and a slightly stiffer spring to complement it. Now on my 440, I went with H&R Super Sport Springs and I had those for about a year um, and they rode fine to me as well. It was definitely stiffer than this car. I felt a lot more feedback than I do in this car. It lowered more than this car, which was the main reason I went with it. I was focused more on looks than performance or handling. And, um, you know, it was okay, but I've heard a lot of people say they prefer the sport springs for a daily driver just because it's not as harsh, you know, even though it doesn't lower as much, it's also not as stiff and it's just more similar to the stock suspension. So for me, I went with the super sport springs on the 440 because it was focused on looks. I went with the sport springs on this car because I was focused on performance without over stiffening things for a street car. And I think having both of those options is great for H&R. You know, you can get whichever one based on your needs. A lot of people also ask me, you know, do springs cause the suspension to wear out faster? Are you going to have to worry about, you know, your shocks blowing out and things like that? Personally, I'm not worried. I didn't have any issues on my 440. I haven't had them on this car very long, but I don't anticipate having any issues on this car either. The main thing I recommend is don't modify your bump stops. A lot of people say they do that to try to get more compliance in the suspension. But for me, I feel like the bump stops are the most important thing to leave stock if you don't want your suspension to go beyond its design travel. The bump stop prevents it from going too far. And if you cut it down, run shorter ones, etc., it might make the car feel more comfortable. But you're also going to potentially run into issues where it's actually bottoming out and damaging the internals. So for me, I left the stock bump stops. It still rides great. I never really notice it bottoming out or anything like that. So I think it's the perfect way to set up the car with these sports springs. Now, of course, the next step up from here are coilovers, and these are unfortunately much more expensive than springs. You can easily spend four or five times as much if you're getting like a really high quality suspension, and it just kind of depends on your priorities. Now, for me, when I look at coilovers, there's one main thing I'm looking at. It's getting corner balance, and I think a lot of people don't use it for that reason, so they don't actually even experience the benefits of it. A lot of people say, oh, you know, if you get coilovers, then the car will be more compliant, it'll ride better, and things like that. But you can do that with a spring and shock combo the exact same way. 
So for me, the main benefit is having that adjustability so that you can corner balance your car and make sure it has the most neutral handling possible. You know, you bring it to a race shop and they'll prepare it, make sure that it compensates for your weight in the car and things like that. But, you know, most people just want it to be a certain ride height, making sure it's level and things like that for pictures. And that meets the needs that they have. But if you're not going to really be using adjustable coilover suspension for the adjustment to gain and take advantage of that performance, it really doesn't have the biggest benefit, I think, that a lot of people assume. But it will help the car ride a little better, especially if you're at the same ride height or lower than you are on springs. It'll ride better. My 440 is now on coilovers and it's much lower than it ever was on springs and it still rides better because there's that extra compliance in the car. So it really just depends on your priorities there. My car is lowered way beyond any you know point where performance is really a priority. So I try not to speak on it too much, but at least from a design standpoint, I understand that coilovers have a big place in the industry in order to make your car perform its best. But yeah, those are my thoughts. You know, again, a lot of people ask me why I left the suspension stock for so long and it's because I really was enjoying the adaptive suspension I think it works great for anybody that's just looking at a fun daily driver if you're lowering it and you want to just close up the wheel gap a little bit the sport springs work great without getting too low where it could potentially harm performance mess up your suspension geometry and things like that but if you really want to prepare your car for racing coilovers are gonna be the biggest best thing that you can put on your car unfortunately i'm just not at a point where i feel like i can really take advantage of it but i think the springs you know meet the needs for most people and a much cheaper cost and they just work really well so yeah if you guys have any other questions about the suspension upgrades that i've done in the past let me know obviously i've done a lot of different things gone back and forth between options and so i have a pretty good feel for what i think is best and the pros and cons of each individual setup but yeah, I'm gonna be sticking with this for a while. We'll see how it does next year. Uh, and I think that's it for this video. So thank you guys for watching and I hope this helps. And if you have any other questions or comments, leave them down below.